For the U.S. Senate race, the Claire McCaskill seat and a new poll out showing that pretty much anybody can beat her in 2018. It's off to a very interesting start with a brand new entrant, the only Republican in the race so far. Before we get to him, though, I want to get to my favorite conservative. His name, Calvin Coolidge, former president. Taxes take from everyone a part of his earnings and force everyone to work for a certain part of his time for the government. And in all my long years, not since Calvin Coolidge, have I heard one politician speak just like he did, calling federal income taxes theft and warning us about the perils of a gigantic size government. Until now, oh yeah, Austin Peterson, the first to announce he's running against Claire McCaskill or whoever will be the Democrat in that race. The first one out of the blocks. And by the way, Austin Peterson came in second on the libertarian ticket for president of the United States. Now he wants to go to the U.S. Senate, making Calvin Coolidge cool again, by the way. Austin Peterson, welcome to the program, sir. Hey, thanks for having me on. Well, this is going to be quite the mission. I mean, you really seem hungry. You came out of the blocks, you announced you're going to be on the Republican ticket, and it seems fair enough at this juncture, considering during the time that President Trump was running, nobody really knew what a Republican was anyway, and in fact, President Trump kind of redefined it, and I'm sure, in essence, you can too. Absolutely. Well, I mean, the true definition of conservatism, uh, to my understanding, has always been someone who believes in individualism, who believes in liberty, uh, who believes in limited government, the idea that you own your life, you own your body, and you ought to be able to do with it as you please, provided you harm no one else. Uh, and that means that when it comes to social values, of course, you can be socially conservative or you can be the type of person who says, socially, it's none of the government's business. Um, and that's what freedom really is all about. Uh, our country was founded on that. Liberty is the principal value which our founders um, prized above all else. And that's what I'm championing, a return to constitutional government. Well, I'll tell you, you know, the whole bit about uh, the, the social issues, I totally understand because right now people seem almost singularly focused on their economies, uh, on the economy itself, and on the fact that government is too much in the way. We can handle some of the social issues, I think, within our own communities, whatever we want to do, but this economy situation is a huge one for people, and it seems to me that the constitutional conservative is perfect for this time as it relates to concerns about the economy. Completely agree. And, uh, you know, the government can't do a lot to create jobs, but it can do a lot to stand in the way. Um, I like to say that uh, if you think about it like a pool of water, the economy can be like a pool of water. And when the government says, oh, we're going to create jobs, what they're really doing is they're taking a bucket out of one end of the pool and dumping it into the other end and saying, hey, look, we stimulated your economy. Uh, but that's not how economics works. Um, to me, if we're going to start creating jobs, we need to do things like talk about eliminating the payroll tax. Or how about the self-employment tax? I mean, I'm self-employed. Uh, I'm a small business owner, and I have to make payroll every two weeks, uh, and I have to pay the government a privilege just for working from home. I, I would think the Democrats would like people more entrepreneurs because if you think about it, I don't have to commute, right? I don't have to go to work in the morning, so I have no carbon footprint in that sense. Uh, I'm cutting down on carbon emissions in that way, uh, but I have to pay for the privilege. But think about it like this, Jamie. Big corporations don't like capitalism. They want these big, uh, they want these big taxes. They want the regulations because they don't want people leaving their firm. Firms. They want us all to spend our lives in cubicle hell so that we have to go and work for them. That's why they want health care to be tied to employment. That's why they want self-employment taxes, because true freedom would mean that we can go and work for ourselves without any, uh, barriers or impediments. Austin Peterson, I've always maintained that it seems that many of our elected officials are simply going to Washington in order to manage our money. That's all they're really doing. The money, of course, that you and I love to talk about being stolen from us. And so it <laughs> seems that Republican or Democrat, we send them to Washington, there are really no real changes made. And in fact, some of them actually work to protect their own interests, Republican or Democrat, protect the people who were giving them money, protect the big corporations, whoever might be friends of theirs, whatever. And so we're seeing really what happens uh, up there with, with a, a formulation of just management as opposed to true reform. We have a few of those folks up there now, and certainly you're capable of joining them. 
So one of the big issues or the slogans that I used during my last campaign was I said that I wanted to take over the government to leave everyone alone. Uh, I don't want to go and be a manager of your life. I want to allow people to choose their own destinies, choose their own religion, choose how to handle their own financial uh, health. I think that when it comes to how Congress should be legislating, it's it's actually more important for us to stop bad bills than it is for us to pass new ones. That's that's the Calvin Coolidge style of governance. And the business of the American people is business. If you want true freedom, uh, then we should be encouraging entrepreneurship and get rid of the barriers for us to be able to get into the marketplace. So, you know, we shouldn't be tied to these corporations for our health care and, and for the benefits. Uh, we should be allowed to go out and compete into the private marketplace. And that's how we're going to make America great again. And Austin Peterson, your tax solutions are very easy, correct? Absolutely. I don't want tax season. I want tax two minutes. Um, I'd like to see us, uh, obviously, in a perfect world, I'd like to abolish the income tax entirely because the founders didn't want an income tax. They passed the lotteries and tolls and fees and different things like that rather than tax us and take away the fruits of our labor. But when it comes to a flat tax, that way nobody has a, any incentive to cheat, right? A lot of people complain that many of these big corporations are getting tax exemptions handed out to them. Uh, so what I would like to see is a simple 15% across the board flat tax uh, very simple tax uh, system so that everybody can comply easily. I actually think you might get more revenue because the truth is that the IRS even admits on their own website that I believe that the uh, the compliance rate is only something like 27%. Only 27% of people uh, pay the taxes that, that we have at our current rates because I honestly think it's because they just don't understand how the system works. So I'd like to see a simplify flat tax which I think is much better, and that way everybody knows what everybody's paying, and it's a much more level playing field. And as a true fiscal conservative, I believe you're kind of cut from the same cloth as a Rand Paul or a Mike Lee or a Ted Cruz, and all three of those guys were not on board with President Trump when he was a candidate, but seem to be some of his best allies right now in Congress in trying to convince him that, you know what, there's only one way to go, and that's the right way. And I think you fit perfectly into that mold. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I always say I have an open heart. I have an open mind. I, I'm willing to change my mind when evidence comes along that contradicts what I believe. And so I, I always had high hopes that the next president would be Biden Obama. He's light years better than President Obama. It's, it's a breath of fresh air, especially with the fact that uh, he appears to be listening to, like you say, to Rand Paul and uh, uh, Mike Lee and Ted Cruz. I think that that's really, um, that's really a good sign because even President Trump, after meeting with Rand, has said, let's get a clean repeal of Obamacare. Uh, the GOP Congress voted 50 times to overturn Obamacare uh, when Obama was the president, so why can't we do it now? Um, and so I'm, I'm going to run and champion those, those uh, issues that they campaigned on and to give some more support to people like Rand and Lee and Cruz because I believe that they have our, our country's best interests at heart. They want to have a more prosperous future for us and for our children, and that's what I'm fighting for. All right, Austin Peterson, really appreciate you joining us via Skype from Kansas City. Best of luck to you, and uh, boy, right out of the blocks, man. Your website's awesome. You're, you have the passion going for you, so you're going to make it a very interesting political season going into 2018. Great to talk to you. Thank you very much, Jamie. Thank you.